Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your man, Mr. Tim Swain. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of MTS TV. Today, I want to simply get a little personal. And I want to share about how God has given me one of the greatest gifts that I've ever received, which is my incredible wife. If you're struggling and you're asking God, is there someone out there for me that I damaged their relationship so badly that it's irreparable and nobody's going to love me, nobody cares about me, nobody's going to be able to meet me where I am and truly understand me? I want to let you know that I felt the same way for many, many years and God blessed me. And although the God road is not always easy, it is always worth it. And he's still putting together holy matrimonies that can blow our minds. Here's the story of how I met my wife. It was a dark and stormy night. Literally, it was a dark and stormy night. But before I go there, let me back up. In January 2006, I came to the Lord and he transformed my life. So from January of 2006 to 2012, I was not with anybody. I was celibate. I wasn't a virgin when I got married, but I was celibate. And that was only by the grace of God. And I didn't understand it then, but God was preparing me for something later on in life. I did not have a lot of dating relationship. In fact, I was not in a relationship with anybody from 2006 until I got married. I dated a couple women and some of them were incredible, amazing, gifted, talented women of God, but they just weren't amazing, incredible, talented, gifted women of God for me. And every decision I made, I prayed, God, help me make a decision in faith. And I learned valuable lessons then. So the first lesson I learned was how to let go of people in faith. Because just because those people are incredible, gifted, talented, beautiful, whatever, it does not mean that they're the right person for you. So let's fast forward to how I met my wife. It was around 2010 or 2011, and I was in Orlando, and I was hooking up with an old friend. We were just kicking it. We went to Ghana together. Shout out to Talene. And she was like, yo, I got somebody I want you to meet. And I was like, nah, man, I ain't trying to meet nobody right now. But let me see her picture, though. Nah, I ain't trying to really meet nobody right now. But how you spell her last name? And so I went back and I was really kind of tired of being in relationships because I had just pursued this woman and we got to the place where we were defining the relationship. She thought we were friends. I thought we wanted to be more. And that kind of messed me up a little bit. So I was like, OK, I'm done. I don't want to talk to nobody else. But I had an open palm philosophy. I said, God, I'm open for you to give me something. And I'm also open for you to take something away. And because I was not sexually active with any of these women and because we did not develop any kind of real strong emotional connections, I didn't have any baggage. So I was able to really kind of bounce back real quick. So I went back, I took this girl's name and I started stalk, I mean I started um, doing my Facebook research on her and I started becoming a little mesmerized. I said, wow, we have a lot of things in common. She seems like a great woman. Now let's fast forward a little bit to the night where we met. So at this time I had just quit my job. I was in Orlando doing training to work full time in ministry and my friend had hooked up this little shindig for us to meet. I was focused that whole night. My hope, my only intention was to scope this woman out. Let me see how she engages other people. Let me see if she's kind. Let me see her personality. Does she laugh at jokes? All of these kinds of thing. So I'm looking at her and the more and more I'm seeing this woman, the more and more I'm getting a little infatuated with her. I'm like, this is a really good woman. Let me confirm what my investigative research online said with some face-to-face -face interaction. And the two were starting to come together. So by the end of the night, I said, okay, it's time for me to make my move. And they had to drop us off because we were new staff members in town. And so we were staying with different people. And they said, well, who's going to drop off Tim? And she said, I will. So I said, yes, the Lord is faithful. I got about 30 minutes to spit my game strong, strong game. And then another girl said, no, I'll drop him off. I said, no, the devil is a liar. Plan B, plan B. Here's what I want to do. Let me get her phone number before I leave. I'm talking with people, but on the same time, I'm looking around thinking, okay, let me see what she doing because I'm trying to make my move by the end of the night. I get to the place where I'm about to make my move and my friend has a flag on the plate. My friend is talking to her a lot. He's not trying to hook up with her, but he's just talking to her a lot. Like, like, nom, 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 nom. and I'm thinking, shut up. I'm trying to get this phone number, dude. I got to leave tomorrow. I'm trying to get this phone number. He doesn't shut up. I drive away. I didn't get the phone number. The whole night I'm thinking, I need to get this woman's phone number. The next morning, I'm at the airport about 4 a.m. And I say to myself, I cannot leave this city without asking this woman for her phone number. And I couldn't ask her for her phone number face to face. So I went to the next face, the Facebook. So I DM'd her and I simply said, hey, I think you're a wonderful woman. I think you're attractive. And I just want to like confirm what I see on the outside is really what's on the inside. Can I get your number? And I told her to think about it and let me know. 
Couple days later, she replied to me. I didn't read the message. Honestly, I don't know what she said, but she gave me her phone number. I called her up and I remember this conversation like it was yesterday. It was August. I was driving with my windows up with no AC in the summertime in Texas. So you already know I was sweating, but I did not want anything to hinder this conversation. I'm talking to her for about two hours and let me tell you something, y'all. It felt like I was having a conversation with an old friend. It was a beautiful, refreshing conversation with a mature woman that truly resonated in my spirit. Fast forward to a year later, I proposed on the same date that she gave me her phone number. Four months after that, in December, we were married. And here we are five years later, still happily married, still going through some trials and tribulations, but I cannot imagine doing life with anybody else. She is still the most beautiful woman on the face of the earth. She is still my best friend. And she is still the one that God has sent to me to show me how much he loves me and how his grace is sufficient. And I want to encourage you to know today that taking the God road is not always the easy route, but it is the most productive and it is worth it. Be encouraged, stay faithful, and know that God still answers prayers. Peace. Yeah, we got nothing else.